Our goal was to excavate one of Alaska's most complete fossil vertebrates ever found and get it out of the ground before the tide covered it up again for the next year. And then safely transport that fossil back to the museum in Fairbanks where we could clean it up and figure out what it is. I'm Pat Druckenmiller, Earth Sciences Curator at the University of Alaska Museum. Kevin May, Operations Manager at the museum, and I had flown down to southeast Alaska near the town of Cake to excavate the remains of an extinct marine reptile known as a thalatosaur. The fossil we had come to excavate was found by Eugene Permackey in 2010. Tongass National Forest geologist Jim Bachtel invited us down to come help excavate the specimen that Eugene had found and to try to figure out a little bit more about what the fossil was and what it might tell us. We camped with the crew from the U.S. Forest Service and waited until the tide was low enough so that we could get access to the site and begin our excavation. This particular site had actually been known to produce fragments of bones before, but never had there been a complete articulated skeleton found in this area. The biggest challenge that we faced in excavating this fossil was that it was found during a very low tide cycle so that the specimen was actually only exposed above water for a couple hours a day and wouldn't have been visible pretty much for any other day of the year. In order to get the fossil out of the ground we actually had to use rock saws. The uh, first step was to actually remove all the rock that was over the top of it, what we call the overburden. And this took an awful lot of work using the rock saw to cut out slabs of rock and then break them out of the ground with hammers and chisels. Just in time. Float planes coming in. Once we managed to remove the first slab of rock that contained most of the skeleton, the tide came in and filled the hole and covered it up until the next day. As it turned out, that was a good thing because when we looked at the edge of the slab we removed, we realized that we actually had more of the skeleton in the hill that we had to remove. So the next morning, a day later, we remove a second slab of rock, and together this included the entire skeleton of the thalatosaur. Once we removed the slabs, they were taken by boat back to Forest Service headquarters in Thorn Bay. And then later the specimen was flown by air to Fairbanks where we could begin the work in the lab. Flying over southeast Alaska today is vastly different from when the thalatosaur lived probably 220 million years ago during the Triassic, when this part of Alaska hadn't even formed yet, but was beginning life, geologically speaking, as a series of volcanic islands way out in the Pacific Ocean. Getting the specimen out of the field was really only the first challenge. The next step was to actually expose the skeleton. And to do that, we enlisted the help of J.P. Cavagelli, who is a fossil preparator from the Tate Museum in Casper, Wyoming. J.P. flew up in February of 2013 to spend a week of time carefully and very slowly preparing the rock away from the bone. One of the things JP was able to find out shortly after he began working on the skeleton was that it preserves a beautiful skull. And if you look closely here, you can see a couple of teeth in the lower jaw, which he's very, very delicately preparing and cleaning out. Once we get the skeleton completely cleaned up and compare it to other skeletons like it in Europe and China, we'll actually be able to determine precisely whether or not this is a new species of thalatosaur never before seen.